All right, so we're going to be checking out the new UV packer in Blender 3.6, and we're going to use this little object as an experiment. But I'm going to just go quickly Smart UV Project this thing. So select it all, Smart UV Project it, go over this window. And I'm going to grab all of it by pressing A, and I'm going to do seams from islands just in case I need them later on. This is also something you can do that's really fun because you can go through and just remove some seams or add some seams. You don't have to unwrap everything uh, manually perhaps, but just something to keep in mind. Now, Blender by default, of course, it lacks some UV tools. So I'm going to highly recommend getting the text tools add-on. I'll be using this a little bit in this video. Uh, text tools is free. There's a link on my website. Same goes for textile density checker, where you can check your UV space utilization. Um, and if you need a more robust packer that's more professional, there's also the Packmaster add-on. It's a paid add-on, but it's really good. And we'll probably play around with this a little bit here at the end so you can get an idea of how this thing actually works as well since you're watching the video but um first up the packer for blender was updated and it's just really simple it's the same button pack islands and now you can see this shape method the menus changed a little bit and this stuff underneath the hood so we have exact shape concave and boundary shape convex and then bounding box as well we're going to go through those real quick just keep in mind if something bends out that is a convex shape. If it bends in, then it is a concave shape. Okay, so these circles here, while the outside might be convex, but the inside is concave, right? So when we pack, we use the default settings here. I think it's all default. And we use exact shape concave. You'll see that holes get filled. And that's pretty much all that means. That's what's going to happen there. Okay, pretty simple. And so if we were to go ahead and pack and we did uh, convex, those holes won't be filled. It's gonna do this number, okay? It's a little bit slow, the packer, unfortunately. I, don't, I think it could be sped up, but maybe that'll come later on. For now, it's just gonna be a little wait. Not too bad, though. Um, now, there's another one, bounding box. So a bounding box, and that was fast, apparently. The, the main idea here is that each UV island gets a square around it, right? That's the bounding box. And nothing is inside that square with it. This is good for things like decals or certain textures you might be trying to make, like um, foliage textures can sometimes utilize this. But it's anything with an atlas, basically, is, is really good for it. So keep that in mind. Now, pack islands, you can see there's rotational methods. So axis align, it's just going to go based off of like a boundary box around it of sorts, and it's going to rotate based off of that. Um, I think, although it seems like it's a little bit more involved. So if we do axis align, these should all, especially with concave, uh, they should all pack pretty dense. Yeah, it's kind of the same result we were getting, but you'll have to experiment with that one and just play around with it, see what you can get out of it. There's another one, though, that's called Cardinal. This allows you to rotate things by 90 degree increments, which is really good. Okay, so we're going to use Cardinal here in a second, but what I want to show you is with the text tools add-on. Some guys were wondering about this, how you align your UVs so that they're perfectly flush, flat, right, up and down, left and right. Um, if they're, you know, you're... 3D world, they're up and down, left and right. Why shouldn't they be in your UV space? Well, that's what I said. But here's the thing. The text tools add-on has a line world, and you can do that. Okay, so it's a really good add-on. I highly recommend getting it. Or that that alone is makes it worth it. But you can also do things like um, you can rectify where you straighten out a set of quads and all that fun stuff. Um, but certain shapes you do need to have lined up like this because what ends up happening is when you go to texture it, it ends up becoming aliased and like substance or when you're creating your texture there'll be like a little jaggy thing on the edge there uh, it won't be quite right so up and down left and right is preferred for most shapes now we got this kind of going all right so we can easily pack it now make sure we choose cardinal and click ok and you'll see those won't rotate now at least not in that manner that they'll rotate 90 degrees right so they'll stay perfectly aligned as needed, which is great. That's awesome. Next up, we have uh, margin method. Really simple idea here. It's same as any other margin method in Blender. You just hold shift, drag it to the right, do something like 0 0.008 or whatever you need for your UV space. And you can give them all some margin from one another. Not a big, big deal. All right. Uh, 
you can lock pinned islands. This one's kind of fun. And it does exactly what you think it's going to do. It works best with concave. Okay. Um, and cardinal doesn't really matter. But if you use cardinal, it'd be fun. Uh, so you can lock pin pin group or lock pinned islands, should I say. We don't have anything pinned right now, so it's not going to do nothing. However, if I knew for a fact uh, I wanted this island right here, and I wanted this island right somewhere over here, and I wanted this one here. Let's just say we wanted to move these different areas. And maybe we want some to have higher textile density, so we make them larger. I don't believe it preserves the scale as easily, but it I believe it does at the same time. I think it does preserve scale to some degree. All right, so these ones here, we can pin. These scales should fluctuate, I, I believe. So that's what I'm saying. It doesn't preserve it entirely. The packer, when you use locked pins, by the way, you right click, you can pin and unpin like that. So if you ever see colored vertices, it's probably pinned or unpinned. Or it's pinned. You need to unpin it, maybe. Uh, so we should be able to select everything. Go to pack. And now we should be able to do locked pinned islands. And you can preserve with different uh, different things here. Scale, rotation, rotation and scale, or all. Which I'm not sure why scale, rotation, and then, and then both, and then all. Wouldn't that be both? Anyways, so let's go ahead and click OK. And what we'll see is that they should pack all around it. It takes, I think this one takes the longest to do when it comes to unwrapping, or packing anyways. It always seems like it hangs for me for some reason at 99%. It takes a little minute. All right, so this is still pretty interesting, in my opinion. That you can now do this in Blender by Vanilla Blender. But Packmaster is way faster at it, just so you know. And you can see, it in fact did what it was supposed to do. Cool. All right, because you can pin them. I'm going to unpin these. All right, and here's another fun thing. If you have overlapping UVs, okay, go back to pack, you can merge them, and it should stick them together, basically. So if you have, like, a mirrored side using the same texture, that should be useful, right? Um, but you can also pack the closest UDIMs or active UDIM or the original bounding box. So we're going to do closest UDIM. UDIMs are kind of hard to understand in Blender because they're not on by default, but come up here is tiles x and tiles y y is of course up and down x is left and right so if i bump this up to like say three you can see we have multiple udems now right and so i could take these and say i want these ones here i want these ones here take all this and i could go uv pack islands and closest udems click ok and watch what happens it piles it all in the center because that's the closest to off this medium point of all of these, right? So you, you have to do these one at a time, unfortunately. But you can, in fact, pack them to the UDIM, right? So that's nice to know. So now you can have, you know, three texture sets for one material and um, have at it, right? So that's pretty good. Now, how efficient is this thing? Well, it actually seems to be pretty efficient. You can see that is, uh, the density went way down. Or actually, you know what? The density is just way down. But we can see the UV space utilization. I guess this works. I wasn't expecting this to work, actually. I don't usually use UDIMS, so it's kind of, you can kind of see, like, the efficiency here of each one of these. A little hard to select, but. It's like 70-ish percent um, efficient. That seems to be the going, the kind of like near average of what uh, the new packer does. However, uh, if you did a little bit of manual placement and tweakage, you'd probably get it higher. Now, you know, nothing's set in stone. Depends on the model as well. So trick here is that if you're looking for more professional tools, the Packmaster add-on, You'll see a couple things here. I can use uh, Blender's UDIM grid. Uh, I can change the margin amounts, similar kind of things in here, right? Uh, but we can also do heuristic uh, search. We can do lock groups. 
it's all kinds of fun stuff in here that we can play around with. And so in this particular case, I locked the rotation as well. And it should pack to the UDIM. But we're going to do heuristics, advanced heuristics at that. And so it should try to find the best possible solution. So while these were getting around 70-ish percent, okay, if I go ahead and just click pack, I want to see how efficient they could possibly be. Okay. And I think it's just gave up at that point. So this first one here, it's like these islands. Text tools again, calculate it. You can see it's about 80%. Yeah, so even though it's a it's an improvement for Blender, it's still not quite here at this level. This is 85. This one's going to be low. 44%. So if these were straightened out, this would be a lot tighter. But All right, so there you have it. Um, Packmaster is, is extremely good. <laughs> That's not the point of the video, but um, it, if you need a professional solution, the standard for a lot of, well, Depending on who you ask, 70% or above is usually acceptable to a lot of people. Um, I prefer to try to hit near 80%, so that's my goal usually. But it really just depends on the model. Texel density is kind of uh, like the UV space utilization, texel density and all that. It's kind of a give and take situation, so it's there's no like right and wrong answers necessarily. But if you do want to try to maximize your efficiency, then Packmaster is the way to go for sure. Anyways, so all in all, new packer for Blender. Does it work? Yeah, it, it works. It works just fine in my opinion. Um, you know, are there better options out there? There's a packer add-on that's free that you can get. That's actually, I think, a little bit better. Or it might be a, a nice addition to have both of them. But I'm, I'm probably still going to use the Blender one, to be honest. And then... Um, because I, I usually go to Packmaster later when I want to set up things particular ways or whatever. But when I'm quick and in a hurry, I don't know. I'll probably just end up using the Blender one, to be honest. Seems like it works pretty well for basic stuff. So, anyways, it um, has a couple advanced features. And it, you'll find it useful, I'm pretty sure. So, I'll check you out in the next video, anyways. Hope you enjoyed. Take care, all right?